Chill, Matt G, The Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. Hinda, what do you mean? It's been a long time coming, ladies and gentlemen, and it's finally happening. Okay. Is that how you do it? Is that you cranking? Yeah? Is that you cranking? Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. Do it again. Uh, well, well, which part? <laughs> the radio thing that you just did. <laughs> Enda, what <do> mean? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ladies and Gentlemen Podcast and Chill. Chilling with the legendary, the best to ever do it behind the mic. Chili M, a.k.a. D. D. That's oh, right. That's yeah. right. We're live at the House of Soul in Spread View. I want to say thanks very much. And uh, it's it's been a long time coming. It's about time. I, I thought you were ignoring me. You know what happens? Every time I see people, they're like, hey, where's daddy? Like, I'm your son. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, they keep yeah. asking me, where the hell yeah. are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm around. I'm around. Yeah. What you been up to, Ted? Uh, nothing much. Nothing. Oh. oh, is that how it goes? First, I thought we'd do cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Look if at you. If we want to do cheers, we can do cheers. You know what, Mac? Yeah. First of all, let me teach you something. I've taught you radio. Let me show you how you do a normal cheers. Okay. Look at a man in the eye and say cheers. Okay, cheers. Yeah. yeah. That's how you do it in future. So you know a person comes from a good school yeah. when you do that. Yeah. It comes from a, it's one of those old English things whereby I, I affirm and I confirm that your drink hasn't been spiced. So mm. take that as a lesson, my man. Yeah. Dude. So you were just asking me where have I been? Hey, bro. It's been. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start, really. Yeah. I've, but uh, I've, I've been in Joburg. Mm. Yeah, I've been at home. I've been in Joburg, unemployed, uh, just hustling, it's nice you to know. Speak to someone who's also unemployed. Welcome to the world of unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> but look, man, I, I, I was just asking you earlier, you know, before we even started the interview, Guti, which one have you had the most ratings on? Because I want to double those ratings. Uh, the most is DJ Zinkley. We've had 200,000 views. 200,000 views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember what I used to say to DJ Spoo? Uh, Catch me if you can. Yeah. So no. to Zinkley, I take this as a challenge and I want to say to you, Zinkley, catch me if you can. And then he drops the bomb. <laughs> but let's start with um, your radio career, man. Yeah. Because uh, you've had a very interesting career. Yeah. I don't know if uh, you and Fat Joe are fighting to see who can get fired the most. <laughs> no, not really, not really. But yeah, I see Fresh has just joined the club. <laughs> Dineo is joining the club pretty soon. We're waiting for you, Dean. <laughs> you you decided to join the club. Uh, but it wasn't voluntary. Uh, uh, no, stop, stop being diplomatic about it. Yeah. The fact remains, Haifel got rid of you and YFM got rid of you. What happened at Y? Uh, ah, it's a long story, Ted. It's not about me, it's about you. <laughs> you started at Y, no? No, I didn't start at Y. I started, I started at uh, Waterfront Radio. I was 17 at the time. I was still in high school. Um, I was fortunate enough to actually get a bursary and study at Bishop Haven because that's where I did my rowing. I was... Um, you were rowing, did you? Yeah. Where do you think I get all these legs from, my man? <laughs> But anyway, uh, long and short of it is I started off, uh, it's now called the, the Pricewater Commons, where we used to have the biggest musical fountain, and uh, that's where my radio career started. Mm. But uh, I was always the steer boy to go to guy, mm. you know, when it came to radio personalities, you know, your Poma Penas, your Ernest Pillays, uh, I used to carry their CDs around, I used to sign in their guests in, uh, S- at, at, at the SABC when I was 17, 18, before I even broke into the industry. Mm-hmm. So, so my radio days and, you know, my, my career was always structured in a way that this man, you know, this is where I want to go. I, I knew from the and word when go. You had, when you're at Waterfront, were you doing the radio that we know, like Uteti, the Diddy that we know? Not, not at all. Not at all. Did you I, have a voice? No, I did. I did because I used to do. Now, you must remember the Waterfront had the biggest musical fountain. So every day at eight o'clock, I had to be there. And keep in mind, I was in a boarding school. Mm-hmm. I was a weekly boarder. And then I had to be driven from school to Waterfront. And on Sundays as well. Uh, I'd be at the flea market. So I was the only DJ that would actually be at the waterfront from 8 o'clock in the morning uh, to, to mention all the specials that are happening at the waterfront. And then 8 o'clock in the evening, I'll have to announce the biggest musical fountain in South Africa. Guys, get ready, because in the count of 20, we will be having this biggest musical fountain. So that's how it started. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, I think it was more of a training ground for me more than anything. 
anything. And then when do you get to Y now? Uh, when I got to YFM was when YFM actually started. Uh, I pride myself in actually being one of the founding member DJs of YFM. In fact, what a lot of people might know and might not know is that uh, YFM actually used my voice to actually be the bidding uh, station for YFM. Oh, wow. So that was major. So I knew I had a gig there and there. Mm. No one could touch me then because I was already trained. And uh, I was 18, turning 19. So when we got the license, I was 18. And uh, when uh, when YFM started actually broadcasting, I was 19. So I was pretty young when I really got into the industry. That's why I always say to guys, you know what, you're not going to break into radio at this age. Mm. You know, you 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 broke in at the right time as well. Yeah. So I always try and advise people to do it early. It's like being a soccer player. You come from a development team, and then from the development team, then you start moving on up the ranks and then up until you make it to the first team. So that's how it actually started. So YFM was born, and uh, I happened to be one of the founding DJs of YFM. But the nice thing is that we never knew when we started YFM that YFM was going to be what it is today. Mm. I always compare YFM as, a, as the leading political party today that is actually governing South Africa. And I see myself in a lot of those guys because they never knew. And they were, their vision was not actually to be in the upfront of the struggle and be ministers or anything. They just did it just purely out of love. Yeah. So YFM was formed not with the intention of actually saying that, you know what, we want to be the best. It was just well positioned. We were at the right place at the right time. And that's where the creme de la creme of all radio DJs came from. Yeah. When you walked in when you were 18, 19, who was there? Uh, who was there? Greg Maluka was there. Uh, yeah. Fresh was there. Bad Boy T was there. Fat Joe. He was a good friend of mine. Fat Joe was a good friend of mine at the time because uh, we, we, we had similarities. There were very similar things. I remember then our program manager was Randall Abraham. He would sit us down and actually, what you see on Idols today is the same Randall that he was when YFM started. Wow. So, so the shrewd Randall would actually say, who are you trying to be, my man? <laughs> who, who, what the hell are you trying to do? You know, so yeah, yeah. that's how it started. So you were tied with Fred Joe, no? I was very tied with Fred Joe. Didn't get along with uh, Fresh that much, just didn't understand him. Uh, I also didn't understand uh, AK. I was very close to Msizi Shembe, who was also one of the founding DJs, and also AK, T Bose as well. Why did you understand Fresh? I just didn't get him the tattoos and you know the <laughs> he had bling. At the time. Yeah, yeah, tattoos and the whole bloody bling and and you know what? Ne? We're there to do radio and he was bringing <laughs> boxes and boxes of vinyls. I'm like, what, what the hell does this guy think? Who, who the hell does he think he is? Yeah. We're there to do links and yeah, now he wants to mix and link. <laughs> <laughs> I knew then that this guy is older than us. <laughs> and what show were you doing at the time? Uh, well, we had two lineups mm. that were given to two us. Two lineups? Yeah. Mm. Uh, first of all, Randall was roped in to join YFM in the middle of us before we even went on air. Uh, there used to be another guy, uh, some rustic guy. Uh, General, who was going to be the program manager, he had his own dream lineup, and um, Randall came in the middle, so he had his own dream lineup, and uh, I did the Saturday and Sunday show, which was called the Judgment Hours because I was upset that I'd never got the prime time show that the general had given. Mm. Now Randall comes in, and then he's bringing in his own, his own boys from Cape Town. He's bringing in Bad Boy T. Mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. and now bad boy t everyone must move and then from there onwards he goes on to rope in uh a, a, a semi a, a, sorry a semi t yeah. to do the breakfast show mm -hmm. and these guys were not there when we were all struggling and we were all having auras and sandwiches waiting for the studios to be built they were never there during the application of the license so there was that beef hence that is why my show was called the judge men hours it wasn't because i was i was i was i was beefed up with anything or anyone or even Randall mm. but it was because I wanted to I wanted them to actually prove myself to them to show them who is king of the airwaves now what was some of the crazy shit that happened when you were in bedrooms because wife I'm starting bedrooms no? yeah 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 I heard uh, you guys we used to sleep in there I heard you guys used to get blowjobs while you were doing a, a link. Fuck that shit. No one was getting any blowjobs and shit. That's a lie. 
<laughs> Look, you know what? We were all broke. We didn't have accommodation. The only craziest things that we used to do is that we were so hungry to actually just go on air. Mm. So the girls and the blowjobs, that's just, I don't know who decided to make that very colorful, <laughs> but that is bullshit. Mm. And secondly, we just wanted to be on air. So that is why we lived in Bertrams for 24 hours a day. We were always in studio throughout. Mm. And then there was a there was a course that they actually made us do, which was called uh, the Dashvel Radio Academy, where there was a guy who was brought in from Germany to actually teach us and you know to just fine tune us mm. about the inner workings of what a radio station should sound like. And that is when we started actually you know identifying ourselves and understanding who we supposed to be, understanding your own personality, which is very important. But there were, there were never incidents like that, unless that was after me, because I left early. I was the first one to be out of the door. Is it? Why did you leave? I left YFM because I was angry. I was angry with them. I thought I was going to do a primetime show. I thought I was the best DJ. I never thought that anyone could beat me. And after listening to Sammy T, I thought I could tear this guy apart. So I thought to myself, you know what? Let me look for greener pastures. And trust me, I did. And when you went on A, was there anyone you were afraid of? Like when you heard, let's say, Fresh or Bad Boy Team, you're like, yeah. shit, this guy's coming with fire. Like we used to listen to each other 24 hours a day. We used to literally listen to one another, which is so important. Mm. You need to listen to radio. And uh, I, 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 I was never afraid of anyone. Mm. Uh, when, I, when I heard what was coming out in the airways at the time, I just looked at the complete package without actually being very clinical around talent. Mm. But I, it was more of the output mm. that I was proud to be a part of, YFM. So I was never like sidelining people. I had my own gripe. But it was never about that yeah. in particular that, ah, oh, this guy is good. Everyone was good. The output of the station was brilliant. And I thought, you know what? Hey, remember, we beat Virgin Radio when it came to application of the license. Mm. So when YFM won the license, you must understand that you guys would be stuck with a Virgin Youth Radio Station, which was applying for the same license, which was 99.2. So it would have been Virgin 99.2 because that was the same frequency they were fighting for. So we tore them apart. Mm. And there were casualties. Your Takile brothers were admitted to hospital. When they got admitted to hospital because they decided to sideline with the guys from Virgin, they were the local bidding team and also it was going to be a whole international company that was coming into the country to be running stuff and it never worked so they never got it so when you quit did you know where you were going to go or it was just like, i never told it. i never told them i was going to quit mm. i never told them i was going to quit i just didn't rock up for the show <laughs> <laughs> i just said that ah, fuck this shit this is not working for me i said to myself you know what no fuck you know what? Besides, I quit after my third paycheck. Yeah. And my, 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 my firstborn was born and conceived on the first paycheck. So you must understand it was like, sing <laughs> achieve. Yeah. So when you left, you didn't have a plan. There was no plan in place. No, I was in love. Mm. Fuck. Yeah. I had the hottest chick. Yes. Sir. At YFM. Yeah. You're kidding. Ask any YFM DJ who had the hottest girl. I had a chick from Swaziland who was Italian. Mm. The mother of all mother of my kids. Mm. And everyone was drooling for her. So I was like, you know what? Ah, yeah, we up and go, baby. Everyone wants to chow you. I'm not safe. Fuck radio. It's not working. I'll get something better one day. Because all my friends and people that I used to carry CDs around for were guys that were already at Metro. So I knew the bigger picture was Metro. Mm. So YFM, for some reason, I just thought, hey, this is just a waste of time. So your next gig, it's Metro. No, it wasn't Metro. My next gig now becomes Nando's. Nando's mm. Heatwave Radio. Mm. Remember at YFM, when YFM started, I was named Judge Jules. I called myself Judge Jules. Because we all had to identify with all these international DJs. Your fat shows were already existing. DJ Fresh. All these guys, like Bad Boy Tees. All mm. these guys, they were all international DJs. Mm. That is why all of them, even Thomas himself, decided to drift away from that whole notion of being whoever he was at the time to being Thomas. Mm. And, and also, I had to outgrow the name because there was a real international DJ called Judge Jules. Mm. And when he came into the country, there was a bit of a confusion. 
Because people thought I was going to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's <kidding. laughs> No, they thought it was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now the only thing is that everyone was like, they, but they said international. Hey, mm. it's me, but it's me, boss. <laughs> hey, this is me. You got that international <laughs> trip. You know? Yeah, it was swag all along, man. So when did you go to Metro then? No, this was after I got into Nando's. Mm-hmm. And then I joined Nando's. Nando's had started. I was very fortunate enough to be at the right place at the right time. Nando's was doing an in-house radio station, which was uh, Heatwave Radio. So the name Chilliam got on because I, we all had to have names. Mm. Similar to the brand, which is the Nando's brand, mm. so we were broadcasting at uh, at uh, at Savoy at the head office. So Chile was Chile because of the Nando's brand. Mm. So M comes from my surname Masinga. Mm. So I had to actually, you know, Shit, just tune it out. Yeah. Now you know. Now Shit. you know. Now you thanks know. Thanks to Nando's, Chile M was born. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Nando's. <laughs> I used to do a show there. Um, I did the afternoon drive show between three and six. And, um, yeah, I did. Was it paying you the same as as why? You know what? Because I was not on weekends, they were paying me more. How much? How much at that time? Uh, YFM's first salary, I earned 5,000. Wow. Yeah, that was a lot of money. And um, And and, 1960? uh, 1960. Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you, Mac. 1960. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) I was earning 5,000 because not only I was a Saturday and Sunday DJ, they pulled myself on the side, me, Fat Joe, and uh, and uh, and um, and um, uh, who else was there? They made us account executives, mm. you know, mm. uh, just to make sure that we, you know, we're fine. So the salary that I'm quoting, the five, was also including w- was also inclusive because I was also an account executive. Mm. So I was selling airtime that I've never ever sold in my whole entire <laughs> life, but because I had a business card, yes, yes, I've never distributed so many business cards in my <laughs> whole entire life. So I had uh, 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 my name and surname and the YFM thing. Yeah. Like, you must understand, I, mean, I came straight out of high school into radio. Yeah. So I never knew I'll have a business card. Yeah. So it was like a cherry on top. But I saw why they did what they did. Um, oh, and Tabo Mukwele as well. Mm. Uh, so it was the three of us who were turned into account executives to sell airtime. Trust me, none of those boys sold airtime. <laughs> Not even one. Because we didn't know. We had Redmark, which was the, the main sales house of the station. They were the guys that were responsible for selling airtime. But we were just there as a token. But 5000 was a lot of money as a yeah. first salary. Yeah, no, and then Nando's, we were looking at about ten. Wow, not bad. No, not bad. And then Metro? And then uh, Metro. Metro, I was, I, was, I was the second highest. Wow. Second highest. Untouchable. After, no doubt. Um, now, this is when I replaced Kenny Maestri. Mm. Uh, Kenny Maestri's wife hated me because I took bread out of that family's mouth. Mm. And I was not going to take anyone, anything that came my way. Now, you must remember I left YFM uh, in a bad space. So mm. those guys were beefed up. Mm. I was the first DJ to break into mainstream commercial on air. Mm. you know. And, and, and there, I was replacing another guy who was like... Uh, he was on a whole Mafuri jam, you know, <laughs> kick ass could <goody. laughs> And I did my my thing and then I got to replace him, which was twelve to three at Metro. Weekdays. Weekdays. Shit. Um, How old were you at that time? Uh, sure I must have been about twenty one. Fuck me, dude. Yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> 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 I love this show. <laughs> I love this show. No, so you must understand that Kenny, Kenny was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his wife hated me to bits. Mm. And now, uh, yeah, I am, um, you know, just, just like I earned so much money that whenever it was month end, I would still have a bit left from a previous month. <laughs> No, those were levels. I never, I never, I never, uh, I got into radio not knowing that you could make so much money. Yeah. And when Romeo negotiated my contract, I was there just to get onto the show and mm. just, you to just do a show. 21. I just wanted to do a you show. Want the girls. You, want... you know, I wanted, I wanted softness. Yeah. I wanted softness. And I had a little baby then, you know, so I was madly in love. Mm. And uh, now they're negotiating my contract. I've never signed such a fat contract my whole entirety. Yeah. Now, those were levels. I was like, fuck. I, I, like, bro, can I just share? Like, can I give you half of this? Like, Romeo, can I just give you half of this? This is Romeo Kumar. This is Romeo Kumar. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, 
So that's what happened. And, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, thanks to him for actually spotting me because he was eating at some Nando's in Melville. Mm-hmm. And then you heard the station, yeah. made contact. And then I get a call that, hey, there's a guy who wants to speak to you on the other side. And then the other guy. And then there was Piwa saying, I think she was a programs manager. She was from Swaziland. And uh, that was during also the Nandi Pastradum. She's mm. late now. You know, they were very instrumental in just shaping my career and making sure that I was... How long did you do that for? 12 to 3? 12 to 3, I did for three years. Wow. Killing it. Yeah. Fucking it up. Like, like I, was the biggest, I was the biggest thing ever. Glenn Lewis saw nothing. Like, in terms of ratings, I was always good enough and so good that, Mina, the next big show that's supposed to be the big show, my show was the biggest show. Wow. Even he knew it. If he tells the truth at 2000 today, he knows the fact. Uguti, I was running kilometers around him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was running kilometers around even the breakfast show guy. I think it was Justice. Yes, it was Justice, justice. at the time. Mm. Yeah. And so, then how long were you at Metro for? Metro, I was, at the, I was there for three years before, okay. they got fi- before I got fired. What did you get fired at Metro? Why did I get fired at Metro? Yeah, no, uh, there, I know. There, I was a delinquent. <laughs> now, you, you don't just start throwing bundles and bundles of cash in my face and you think oh, I'm not I, I, I got I got involved in wrong relationships. Mm. I dated wrong women who introduced one woman that was an SABC continued to presenter um who was at the time was part of a group a, a, a music group introduced me to drugs. Mm. Uh, I started off with weed well I was already smoking weed at the time and then it escalated to ecstasy and then from ecstasy to cocaine. Do you remember your first line? What? Your first line of Fuck course. Fuck, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. What is going on? What is going on? Uh, we were in Cape Town. We were at uh, James Small's club at Caprice. And uh, unfortunately, James is just late and may so rest in peace. Mm. We were at Caprice in Camps Bay. Mm. He had just opened this club uh, called, um, called, uh, called uh, Caprice. Mm. And, and there I, I was normal, normal after that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I bumped into, I met this other friend of mine um, who was a good friend of mine when we were growing up from, from my neighborhood, uh, mm. and a very, very, you know, astute businessman. And now, because me and you know, he wants to talk business. And me and now, uh, I'm with this girl, yeah. and I've got another girl. I think at the time I had like five chicks. And yeah. this one that I was dating was a Miss Durban, mm-hmm. uh, who was dating a one of the doctors from the uh, football uh, squad. You know, mm. and uh, she basically was the one who just, I, 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 I just got lost in love, mm. you mm. know. Mm. And as I got lost in love, there were press, there were statements that I had beaten my girlfriend from SABC. Mm. And Fresh was the first one to actually break the news. And fuck, did he have a great day <laughs> actually running miles around me. Are one of the top Metro DJ retro. Yeah. They used to call us retro DJs. Yeah, yeah. Has oh, just at Y. He's still stuck at Y. <laughs> All of them are stuck at Y. <laughs> They're reading about me at the JNP Met. Yeah, yeah. One of the only gigs they could do was flipping. What's that place at Baseline? Yeah, yeah, those yeah. Those are the only gigs they could do. <laughs> and I'm flying high at the time. Yeah. And those are good times. Those are good days. Yeah. You know, but we'll bump into each other because of the camaraderie we had. Yeah. When, when YFM started, I think we always had that soft spot. Do you know that we, we started this? And, and, we started this. And, and when, when you were the, like the shit, like Chili M, how much coke were you doing like a week? Well, I used to send you. <laughs> you sent me what? To the K2 underground to thing, to the parking lot. To, to go what? get a bag. Oh, hey, I've never done that. No, I sent you one. I did. You know, you I know. <laughs> yeah. And why? And why? I don't know what you're talking about. And why? Mac. Maybe I took the bag, but I don't know what was inside. Don't lie. I kid you not. So you don't remember this. Hey. This black bag thing that you used to get for me, Niti Mina, here's the cash, go run down. Oh, I the wrong guy. I right guy. I read wrong. Okay, so you don't remember the essential water days? I remember essential water, but I was, the, I was 18 at the time. I don't the know what slush it was. puppy. I didn't know what that was. The slush puppy? Yeah. At the games arcade? Yeah. 
You so you are mixing that thing with the uh, thing for me? No. Before we went on there. No. Okay, I then wrong guy. <laughs> Clearly, I was high. <laughs> um, how much? How much would you say? How much coke were you doing like a week? Oh, see, I don't know. I don't know, man. I was, I was, I was, I was just in my own world. You mm. know, not that I'm gonna sit here and glorify what I went through. It was a, it was. It, I, I don't regret it, mm. but but a lot. Mm. You know, I I think I think me, you know, putting numbers around bags and cash would be childish of me now. Yeah. You know, because and you, you mm, do a show high. I do a show high. Jeez. I've even I've even bought coke on air, <laughs> and 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 I called a dealer on air, How the and fuck then. Do you do that? I, I I said I wasted so much money and this was what uh, at YFM. Yeah. I said let's bust Second the drug time. dealer. Second, Second time, time now. Yeah. Yeah. I went back to Y. Yeah. I said no, let me trust the bug deal a, a drug dealer. Mm. And then I wanted people to actually just send me emails and say da, 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 da. okay, uh, bust the drug dealer, daddy, bust the drug dealer. <laughs> and then I called the drug dealer and I was like, dude, listen, I need a fix. <laughs> I'm just going to act as if, you know, we're staging this whole shit, okay? <laughs> but when I just bring me the right thing. And everyone is like, yo. And then I call him on air. And then I'm like, my man, how are you, my guy? And then the guy on air says, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Get me in the same place, please. Make it a fat one this time. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy did. He brought it through. Mm. And then there was a guy who played a cop. Into the wrong place as if he busted the truck dealer in time. <laughs> the bag was in my hands. <laughs> no. I, but that brought in ratings. Yeah. Mina, Mina, my radio is always about ratings. Everything I do on air, I do it for ratings. Mm. Anything that just doesn't make sense for me doesn't add up to ratings. I'm a ratings guy and, and I, come, I, come, I come with piles and piles and piles. Mm. Truck loads are full of... Of, of ratings. Yeah. You know, when it comes to sand and, and little sand particles, if we had to take sand, a whole truck load, a whole 10 ton load, and you had to minus all of those in one, that's the type of audience that. Now, let's I talk about in. the essential rush because that's when I was introduced to Chilean because I never knew you as the general or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The janitor yeah. or whatever. The janitor? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your English, dude? <laughs> the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, GDM essential rush to know Ranaka, and that was my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that 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 was uh, that was. You uh, approached Dineo to come. I on. approached Dineo. Mm. Uh, went to Dineo's house, got Dineo to come through do a show with me. Dineo was going to be my producer, but I always kept an open door mic policy and an open mic policy that whoever wants to add on to anything, please do so. Just 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 so long as you know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, brought her through to the station, introduced her to management. They told her they didn't have a budget, but Dineo being the talent she is and the quick learner that I had spotted in her, you know, actually just 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 made way. She made inroads. Yeah, you know, and and yeah, so it was happy so, days. And Essential Rush was Essential Rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Essential Rush. <laughs> Chiliam and Dineo on the Essential Rush. Did he yeah. show me love? Yeah, that, that was our first feature, actually. Um, Just on the 20 past mark, we were like... There's Duh. one thing that, 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 that Diddy did on air. I'll never forget this. And I was like, yeah. fuck, this is amazing. So you bought airtime, right? Mm. And it was back then where they gave you numbers. And you had to punch <laughs> in the numbers. So Diddy's like, in five minutes, I'm going to give out some airtime. How much did you say? I can't remember. Uh, 29 rand, I think. Uh, anyone who'll remember the number. I remember that. Because yeah. now I used to do that with you. <laughs> Say, it's okay, let's go. Here are the numbers. Boom, 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 boom. Whoever loads. And then, obviously, the next guy who loads in, the numbers would have been used. And that was every time I had loaded for myself. So, tough luck for you, dude. <laughs> go buy your own every time. Yeah, yeah. But when you, when you do radio, man, like, what goes into your mind? What goes into the preparation? Like, what do you think about? Who, Besides me? ratings, yes. Content. Nah. Everything I do, I look around. I can, I I create. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a radio demigod. Mm. I'm a radio demigod, and 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 me saying that I'm not saying it because I'm being cocky or anything. It's a fact. You know when you, it's second, everything just becomes second nature. Mm. It's like a switch that happens. I unlock my inner radio man. Mm. 
there's something that we share as on-air personalities, which are called airmanship. Mm. You know, once you can tap into that, then you qualify to be in the school that I'm in yeah. when it comes to radio. So, I mean, uh, there, there is never, ever competition. I don't think of, of, of competition. I think of the people that I'm speaking to. Because I remember you once told me, because um, I used to be a technical producer for Essential Rush. Yeah. And you once told me, they're like, dude, uh, a mic is like a soccer ball. Yeah. Like anyone can kick a soccer ball. Yeah. But the way Ronaldinho kicks it. Yeah. The way Messi kicks it. The way Ronaldo kicks it. Yeah. He finesses it. He makes love to it. Absolutely. And when you turn on that mic, you gotta finesse it. Though. Yeah. No. 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 Look. I, 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 I mean. I mean. Uh, everything becomes center. Uh, uh, it becomes structured around my headgear. My radio headgear gets into full mode and full overdrive. Yeah. And I don't need to look back to see where the goalpost is. Mm. I will just turn and just go yeah. from whichever angle because I, I have a peripheral vision. You know, even with radio, I know how it will be received. Mm. You know, I know exactly how to actually appeal to the audience that uh, is of my target with that, market. With that, with that school in mind, what do you think about radio now? Ah, there's no radio, my guy. Nah. There's no radio. And it's so sad. It's so sad that there is no radio now. That is why I, I, I don't know where we lost it as a, as, a, as a country, but there is no radio today. Mm. And it's really sad, you know. But um, as sad as it is, it's because we've got people that are gatekeepers that don't want to open doors for future talent. And that is the biggest flaw that we have as a nation and think as WFM personalities. Does that? WFM still does that. Does what? Uh, open doors for, un, for talent. You call that talent. <laughs> You call wife and you call you call that talent. <laughs> what, what 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 is that? Like, no, I'm just checking. No, wife M has got a group of people. Actually, oh, I I you know what? Now I got a I've got a soft spot for wife M. Mm. I will always be wife M at heart. Mm. My heart and my blood will always be black and red. Mm. For the mere fact that's where my career started. Mm. But where wife M is today, maybe it is because I've outgrown the brand mm. and I'm an older person. People that started wife M and were listening to my show today are professors. Mm. You know. Mm. So there is that thing. So I don't want to be biased and say that what I hear because at the end of the day, my kids still listen to YFM. Mm. So YFM is a brand. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the, 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 I'm not their target market. Okay, Metro, so, what do you think about Metro? Metro, Metro, I don't know what's happening. Well, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to speak bad about Metro. Because <laughs> <laughs> they might call you next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony. <laughs> No, look, <laughs> Metro has got its own things. You must remember, every station goes through. That is why you're not allowed to build a station and a brand around a personality. Mm. This is exactly what happens. Mm. You cannot build something around an individual. Uh, radio has been built, Metro, for instance, was mm. built around Fresh. Mm. So with uh, Fresh being fired... You know, everything seems to be... Uh, I, bet you, I bet you Fresh is happy where he is. Yeah. He's like smiling. He's gone you, nine know. you worked at 947 as well, eh? Yeah, I worked How at 947. For? I was there for three months. <laughs> <laughs> you worked at 947. <laughs> I just couldn't stand just, you know... Back announcing, you know, yeah. it's drizzling outside. Just make sure that you keep a safe following distance. <laughs> We're about to play you the Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> Jobic's number one hit station. I thought to myself, gosh, when am I going to die? I want to crank. I want to do crank. Where's the line? I want to do crank. Where's the slash puppy? <laughs> yes, sis. Hey, the security guys on the crown there. <laughs> They monitor everyone. You've got a station manager who's got cameras at home. <laughs> He's monitoring. No drinks allowed in studio. It was just too much, dog. It was yeah, just yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You also did East Coast Radio as well. Did East Coast Radio. Same vibe. I did every radio station I've ever worked for. I've, <laughs> I've actually worked for them. Almost, I, I think maybe I always get called back. Yeah, yeah. Because they can never find another me. Yeah. It's only Metro that I haven't done twice. Wow. And watch this space. Yeah. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko.